Hey, welcome back everyone. In this week's video, we're going to go over the busy week that Rocket Lab just had. We'll talk about the Neutron update, the grand opening of the Engine Development Center, an update on Electron's flight status, the acquisition of Formula Manufacturing Facility for Sail GP Technologies, and finally, we'll go over an update from last week's video where we went over the 2030 bull case for Rocket Lab. Let's get into it. So to kick things off, we'll start with the Neutron update. For those keeping track, the next milestones for the Neutron the frosty tanks and the hot fire. So frosty tanks being the cryogenic testing for Neutron's second stage tank, and hot fire being the testing campaign for the Archimedes engine. So this past week, we got an explicit update of the frosty tanks and an implicit update for the Archimedes engine. Let's start with the frosty tanks. As part of the structural testing, the second stage tank for the Neutron is filled with liquid nitrogen and pressurized to the maximum expected operating pressure. And from there, it's pushed beyond its limits to the point of failure. Essentially what Rocket Lab is trying to do here is test the margins for the Neutron's tanks. The next milestone we can expect is the hot fire. The last update that we got was that we can still expect the hot fire testing sometime this year. And this week we got an indirect status update, which also leads into our next story, which is the grand opening for Rocket Lab's new engine development center. At the ribbon cutting ceremony, we got a glimpse of what appears to be a nearly, if not entirely completed, Archimedes engine as well as a few more interesting shots of the complex. It's safe to assume, judging by these photos, that the Archimedes engine is coming along well. This new engine development center is located in what is formerly Virgin Orbit's headquarters and Launcher One manufacturing facility located in Long Beach, California. This makes a lot of sense because of its proximity to Rocket Lab's headquarters and satellite production facility, which is virtually within walking distance. In April of 2023, Virgin Orbit filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, and Rocket Lab acquired the lease on the building, along with its machinery and equipment inside, for $16.1 million in a bankruptcy auction in May of 2023. Rocket Lab estimates that the value of the facility and its contents are around $100 million, including $20 million in leasehold improvements and $80 million for the equipment inside. During the ribbon cutting ceremony, Adam Spice mentioned that this acquisition has, quote, freed up a tremendous amount of ability to scale up our space systems business. It's probably a bigger enabler for space systems than it is for the rocket part of our business." Unquote. This 13,400 square meter engine facility will be used for the production of both the Rutherford engines used on the Electron rocket and the larger Archimedes engines that are being developed for the Neutron rocket. Also during the grand opening was a mention of the status of the Electron, which is still being investigated after the September 19th launch failure, where the second stage wasn't able to complete the delivery. The investigation, according to CFO Adam Spice, is still in its early days. He also added, nothing right now would indicate anything different when comparing the expected time frame to the previous two failures. For reference, there were 58 days after the first failure before the next launch occurred, and 75 days after the second failure before the next launch after that happened. So assuming mid to late November is probably the safe bet. Next up, we have the acquisition of Sail GP Technologies Manufacturing Facility. When I first caught wind of this story, and I saw that Rocket Lab was acquiring a manufacturing facility that specialized in catamarans, I thought, perfect. This ties in exactly to what we went over in our last video, where I pitched the idea that Rocket Lab should be buying their own catamaran for marine recoveries. The more I looked into it, however, I realized that a catamaran like the DP-1 Seaworker is um, quite a bit different than the ones that are being produced from SailGP Technologies. SailGP is an international sailing competition that features high-performance F-50 foiling catamarans. As you can see here, these catamarans are nothing like the catamarans that Rocket Lab is using to recover the electron. Founded in 2001 as Core Builders Composites, SailGP's technologies has since shifted their focus on the building and maintaining the cutting-edge F-50 foiling catamarans used in SailGP's Global Racing League, which accounts for around 80% of their work. Aside from the manufacturing of these F-50s, SailGP Technologies has been a supplier to Rocket Lab, providing advanced composite materials and components for Rocket Lab's Electron Rocket. 85% of SailGP's events take place in the Northern Hemisphere, so the League has decided to relocate their manufacturing facility to Southampton, England, near SailGP's global headquarters in London, England. As a result, starting this week, which I assume to be October 1st, 
Rocket Lab will lease Sail GP's 6,500 square meter development and manufacturing complex in Warkworth, New Zealand, while retaining more than 90% of Sail GP Technologies New Zealand-based staff, a headcount which is around 50 people. This new facility in Warkworth is about 70 kilometers or one hour north of Rocket Lab's Auckland production complex. The facility will support electron production as well as the neutron development and subsequent production. As part of the transition, Rocket Lab will retain the facility's manufacturing equipment, including an autoclave, ovens, composite material cutting plotters, CNC metal machining equipment, and large-scale CNC composite machining equipment. For those who are wondering, like I was, what CNC means, it's computerized numerical control. It's a computerized manufacturing process where the software controls the movement of production equipment, or simply put, automated machinery. Finally, for the price of this acquisition, neither side has put a dollar value on the deal, but we do know that the Workworth plant has a capital value of $5.8 million, so it's probably safe to assume that Rocket Lab acquired this for maybe um, like a ballpark range of $5 million. Could be less, could be more. It might be a little bit of a sweetheart deal because both sides are kind of um, getting what they want out of it, so um, it's tough to say, but I'm sure we'll know a little more in about a month here when we get Rocket Lab's Q3 earnings. Finally, we have a quick update from last week's video regarding the pricing of a recovery vessel. So while I was doing the research for last week's video, I was trying to find the price of a DP-1C worker, which is the catamaran that Rocket Lab uses for the marine recoveries. The issue that I was having though is I was not able to find that, that same make or model anywhere online. So what I did is I asked ChatGPT, and that's where I went wrong. I think what ChatGPT recited back, I, I if I remember the quote exactly, it was something like the price of a catamaran could be in the six figure range, so $100,000, but it could also be um, hundreds of thousands of dollars more. I think the um, the price that it was reciting might have been like a cheaper catamaran. And now I'm after this whole sale GP acquisition, I'm realizing that there's a wide range of catamarans. It's kind of like saying a Toyota truck and a semi are both trucks. Sure, they're both trucks, but they're... Um, not the same. So that being said, I did a little bit more digging. Now I was able to find the price of similar vessels. They're not the exact same, but they're all in the same ballpark as far as size and capacity and what Rocket Lab might need to be fishing electrons out of the ocean. Now, as we can see here that $1 million, as I said in the last video, was a little shy of what we should really be aiming for. So assuming that a $5 million price tag is probably a little more on par with what we should be assuming as far as the purchase price of one of these recovery vessels. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop over the spreadsheets here. For those of you who watched last week's video, you'll notice that I added this little section here. Essentially what this is, it's a way of identifying the payback period. What we're gonna do, we'll just add that $5 million price tag assumption for the cost for the marine recovery asset. Now as far as the recovery mix, this is simply the percentage of launches that are going to be recovered specifically for the Electron. So like we mentioned in the last video, Rocket Lab, uh, I guess it was about a year ago, they cited that they're aiming for 50% recoveries. However, that was with the air recovery. If we're going exclusive with marine recovery, I'd say a safe bet is 75% or higher. The next cell that we're going to add to here is the expected number of annual launches going forward. So we know that the target for 2024 is 20 launches. We can assume that the next year might be a little bit higher, but could also be a little bit less, depending if the neutron is going to be eating any of that demand or if the electron will just kind of stabilize at 20. Either way, let's call it conservative and say that there's going to be 20 launches per year over the payback period for the marine recovery asset. You'll see that the numbers that come back from this is an expectation of 15 annual recoveries. That's the 75% of 20 launches. The next number down is the recoveries to break even. So with these assumptions, you'll see that the number of years to break even for this investment would be two years. Now this is all assuming the base case. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with this, maybe skip back to the last video, but simply put, each of these dark cells are cells that the user can update. So for example, if you think that the rent is gonna be higher than $75,000 per day, you can adjust that. If you think that it's going to be more than two days that it's being rented for, you can adjust that, so on and so forth. When it comes to the number of days that the recovery vessel is needing to be rented for, I think that these this two day here, I think this should be a little bit higher. And the reason for that is if you have a five day window and Rocket Lab announces, hey, red is for recovery, we're going to be recovering this next launch and it's supposed to be launching on this particular day. And then there's any sort of setback, 
it, it's going to look a little bit foolish if they're going to say, oh, sorry, the launch got pushed back by three days, so now we can't recover it anymore. As a result, this number is probably going to be higher than two days. You'll notice that if we adjust the number of days here, these are all formulaic. So the number of days is going to feed in to the total price. You'll see that even adding three days, it goes from 166,000 up to 244,000. And of course, all of these are feeding into each other. You'll notice that the years to break even, assuming that if you're having 20s for three days, is going to be less than two years now. Now, I'm not sure if maybe they have some sort of uh, agreement that if you don't actually go out on the vessel for that particular day, you don't have to uh, be charged for it. I'm not sure exactly on that. So like I said, assuming the two days, that's probably minimum. So even if you, you know, round this down, be conservative, call it 150,000, you know, that's still going to be roughly two years to break even. All this to say is the recovery and rebuild of the first stage it's going to remain untouched from the last video. So to wrap this section up, my point stands from the last video. I think Rocket Lab should seriously consider buying their own marine recovery asset. One final note on this is you'll notice that this number here, the cost to recover and rebuild and get the entire first stage ready to go again, this still is sitting at the $1.8 million mark, which leaves the value of recovery here untouched. So if you think I might be off the mark with any of these spreadsheet assumptions, um, I'd let me know in the comments below or if you're if you're more the curious type, um, check out the spreadsheet yourself. It's available in the Patreon link in the description below. Aside from that, thank you guys for hanging out. I'll see you in the next one and have a great day.